So if you are not a small school, start thinking like you're a small school. So all of a sudden understanding that the relationship that you have with your students is going to have a huge impact. It, it, it's going to be crucial to develop that in some way. And the second thing for me is going to be our ability to develop a incredibly growth-minded, positive faculty culture. And I think if we pay attention to that in terms of how our faculty are operating, how our whole staff, what is that culture going to be like? Is it progressive? Is it positive? Is it professional? That is actually going to pave the way. The opportunity that we have to, to help our students uh, take an active role in making their community and the wider community and the world a better place for next generations uh, is something that has taken on uh, a greater importance in our programs. One thing that we're going to have to do is make sure that our curriculum is no longer strictly Western-centric. We have to teach our children to be citizens of the world and global citizens of the world and get out and visit and find out about other cultures and if they can't do that on an airplane, they should be doing that through connecting globally through technology. That's our real challenge is to make sure that when we're preparing kids for a very competitive world, when we're comparing them with a, a world that's constantly changing, is have their days constantly changing, having them constantly shifting gears, thinking about different things, putting in different scenarios, different environments, working with, with different kids on a regular basis. They are always in a state of flux, always in a state of change. And I think if we model that in their day-to-day -day lives, then when they leave us and they go to university and life beyond, they're better prepared. What a lot of school administrators would like to see and boards would like to see is what I was referring to earlier, and that is opening those schools up to a broader base uh, and uh, welcoming students who uh, will be leaders in their communities um, uh, in the future but don't necessarily come from a, a family background that would allow them to attend the school financially. There's a greater degree of inclusivity and collaboration with its neighbourhood and its, its neighbourhood schools and opening up their campuses so that there is a far stronger sense of shared enterprise. Uh, and I think that's still to come. The first thing that we're doing is we're listening and everything must be uh, lived through our mission. On a daily basis we must keep that at the forefront. We're looking to be carbon neutral at the end of five years and where we are specifically in the Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia uh, we are on the top of a hill and we get tremendous winds coming through the valley so I'm looking at, uh, at wind power and looking to, to sort of reduce our dependency on, uh, on the grid itself. We've just completed a, a multifaceted survey of our old girls, 1,500 of them, current faculty and staff, all our students, grades 5 through 12, and our employees, faculty and staff. And we know now by scientific research what are the opportunities for us for developing. We of course will do things differently and a lot of it is going to be through technology. So particularly in a girls' school, we want to make sure our girls are engineers, are techno technologically trained, and can go into any field at any time. I think we're approaching a point where we're limiting the kids that should be able to experience our schools. The answer to that isn't just cost-cutting, it is looking at, at how do we support through financial aid a broad group of children able to experience these schools, but to me that's the big issue. I think we've never lived in an age of change such as exists now. Uh, technology is changing things all the time and will continue to do so. The, the world's sped up and it's a case of trying to, de to determine what the fundamental core values are, uh, stick with the best of those, but actually be adaptable and open to change uh, and keep reviewing it. It's critical for us to make sure that we have this program where there's a breadth of opportunities, a breadth of things to do, and then to make sure that we have top people, top talented people running those programs. So they are really being driven by bottom up. It's teachers that have amazing ideas or programs or administrators and they're in an environment where they're allowed to flourish. There's challenges, there's collaboration, there's competition and it's all happening all in one space.